This is the XWID pen stylus for iPad. And coming in at a under $30 price point, this seems like a pretty good value on paper. It brags about things such as a year standby time, palm rejection, and tilt recognition. But is it a good competitor with the Apple Pencil? Well, let's find out. Before we get into the unboxing and testing a video, I do wanna let you know that XWID sent this product to me free of charge. But that being said, uh, I am not sponsored by XWID at all, nor am I showing them this video before uploading. So every opinion you get about this pencil is my own and no one is filtering it. I'm giving my honest feedback. And so let's get into it. All right, and here we have the X XWID uh, stylus. Uh, with palm rejection, so that's nice. And the packaging seems pretty good. It's got a little, you know, like ding in it from shipping. I'm not gonna, you know, fault anybody for that. And a little something here. This sort of stuff never really bothers me. I don't really care too much about like, I don't, I don't hinge my review of a product based solely on like packaging. And if I saw this in a store or if I had ordered this myself, I would be like, it's fine. <laughs> It doesn't strike me the wrong way. I don't hinge too much of my review of a product on packaging alone, but we'll you know explore a little bit of what the packaging looks like. You got a picture of the stylus on the front, giving you a nice preview of what it's going to look like when you open the packaging. I'm assuming that's you know one to one size. You get a little description on the side, stylus pen with palm rejection. On the back, there is you know a little a little description of like you know what it does, how it works. It magnetically attaches to the side of the iPad, which is nice. It specifies specifically for the 11 inch and 12.9 inch iPad. Tilt pressure uh, writes smoothly. I'm not sure exactly what, what that means. We might see it when we use it. It claims long battery life and up to a year of super long standby, which is very interesting. It says on the side here also that it's compatible with all these other iPad devices from the 11 inch, um, most recent, I'm assuming, all the way down to the iPad mini fifth generation. So that's pretty, pretty good. Even the iPad Air third generation, that's nice. And yeah, that's about it for the outside of the packaging. Let's open up this little bit here and see what we're dealing with on the inside. Now it's time to get to the goods. I don't have a fancy knife or anything like a lot of other unboxers do. I just use my thumbs and a little bit of elbow grease and that's okay with me. Come on. Okay, I underestimated this packaging. I'm gonna grab a knife. <laughs> All right, we've got ourselves a super fancy cutlery tool here now. Now we can start to, you know, get at the packaging a little bit. Just. Just, that's literally all we needed, just to get into it. Okay. That plastic was deceptively strong, so I guess that is a plus for the packaging, right? Okay, so we'll open. There we go. And it looks like it opens from the top here. Okay, just kind of, and it looks like there's just a little tab that slides out. Cool. So we'll get a little view of what this looks like as we slide it out. Oh, okay, and there's some stuff. Nothing else in the box. Some stuff underneath instructions and a charging cable. Oh, it looks like an extra tip. Looks like you get an extra tip there. So that's really nice. I'm glad they included that. Let's go ahead and see how this looks. And I'll place all this stuff on the side for right now. Okay. Pops out of the packaging, really nice. Oh, this actually has like a really nice weight to it. It actually feels pretty good. I was expecting, and I'll, because the, the price of this is a fairly competitive price, it's in the $25 or so range. I'll leave a link and uh, I'll put an actual, uh, the official price uh, right here, but it's in like the $25 range. And this is actually uh, surprising. It has a lot of weight to it, which feels really nice in the hand. I feel like I'm basically holding the official Apple Pencil, which is really nice. There's this button up here on the top uh, in, or is this a button? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm figure I know I haven't read the instructions yet. I'm figuring this out as I go. There's a, there's a little rubber piece that goes in for the charging port. I gotcha. Okay, so it looks like for the charging port, there's a little rubber tab there. Okay, I see, that's, that's clever, I don't mind that. I thought it was a button at first, I guess not. I don't mind that little rubber tab being there. It looks pretty good like that. All in all, pretty nice. So let's see, let's check this out. Let's see how this comes off. Okay, you got like a, so it basically looks like the inside of the Apple Pencil when you open that. You get that little um, piece of metal. I don't know what it's for, whatever the technology is, is a secret to me. But uh, all in all, the quality and the look of this pencil is, uh, is very good. It basically feels the same as holding the Apple Pencil. The only 
uh, thing I would say is this seems to have a smooth finish where the Apple Pencil has a matte finish. Now, if that's something you prefer, um, the Apple Pencil has that. This does not. It's more of a smooth uh, finish. It's somewhere in between. It's not quite as glossy as the original Apple Pencil, the first gen, but it's also not as matte as the second gen Apple Pencil. So it's somewhere in between, not quite glossy, not quite matte, but it feels nice in the hand, very weighted. Um, it feels super nice. Um, so we will get into some functionality now, which means I will have to read some of the instructions. Okay. Before we get into that, we can see a side-by-side -side with the official Apple Pencil. Okay, so as you can see, it actually is uh, quite a bit taller than the Apple Pencil. When you're not looking at these side-by-side, -side, you can sw almost swear that they're exactly the same, but they are, are pretty uh, different, actually. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. This one is quite a bit taller, uh, and the tip is, uh, is quite a bit bigger now that I see it. Okay? Um, but if I hadn't known, if I hadn't checked this out previously, I would have been like, oh yeah, they're exactly the same. But now we know that they are quite a bit different. I'm surprised, okay? Um, but these minor differences are inconsequential um, when it comes down to functionality, and that's the most important thing. How does the pen perform? So we're gonna put our actual Apple Pencil off to the side here. We don't need that at the moment. And let's go ahead and I wanna see how this performs because there's this little uh, tab here that covers up the USB-C port for uh, charging, but it also claims to be able to magnetically attach. So I'm curious if this inhibits that at all because if you can, if you can see, there is a bit of a gap there. So I'm wondering if that uh, affects it at all, if it makes it harder, if I have to take that off. So let's go ahead and stick this on. It looks like it still attaches, but there is a bit of a gap. I don't think I like that. So I am gonna go ahead and remove this. Now the smart thing about them putting the USB-C port on this side is when you magnetically attach it to the iPad, it does cover up that port. So there's not really much of a chance of any dust or anything getting in there um, on your day to day. So you put that on and now it sits flush with the iPad, which I much prefer, much prefer that. Instructions for use. Okay, let's see. So it looks like to use this device, we have to turn off, we have to turn off the Apple Pencil doodle function, uh, whatever that is. I will go check that out in the settings. And also we have to turn off draw only with Apple Pencil. We have to do that. Okay, it looks like the power button is on the tip of, the, of this uh, new uh, stylus. And okay, I think that's all we need to do. I think that's all we need to do to get this working. So let's open up our iPad here, okay? Let's go into uh, our settings. And now we're gonna head on down to Apple Pencil and only draw with Apple Pencil is now off. And it looks like I have this setting that they told us to turn off already. That's already off. So we don't have to worry about that. But now it's said to, when we need to, tap the power on and off twice. So just this. Okay, so it has like a little touch, a little touch sensitive part on the top so that turn on our stylus. So let's see if this works. Doesn't look like it worked. Maybe I, you know what? Um, it isn't specifying on here, but maybe I do need to also unpair my Apple Pencil. That could be the case. When we reviewed the Zag Pro stylus, that was one of the things we needed to do to get it to work on the iPad. So that may be the same thing we need to do here. I will go into my settings and uh, go to Bluetooth and turn off, uh, I will disconnect my Apple Pencil. Forget this device, okay. And now let's try turning it off and on again. And now it seems to be working, okay. So when you're, if you buy this, if you use, uh, pretty much I can, I can almost safely say, if you are using a third party stylus, just disable your Apple Pencil if you own one, uh, because it seems like they don't jive with each other. It seems like if you're using it uh, and you also have an Apple Pencil, you need to disable the Apple Pencil before uh, third-party styluses will, will work. And it seems like everyone I've tried has had the same conclusion. So if your third-party stylus isn't working, I would definitely recommend just turning off the Apple Pencil, forgetting this device and seeing if it works then, because that may just do it, okay? 
But now that we have gone into all of this stuff, we can check out and see all the different things we can do with this Apple Pencil alternative. The first one I'm gonna try is the thing that a lot of people use, uh, the Apple Pencil 4 or just the iPad Pro in general, which is taking notes. And I wanted to see if this worked. Okay, so it looks like um, one of the functions when you use an Apple Pencil is you can double tap on the screen uh, and it will bring up your notes app and you can start to draw in there and do whatever you want. It looks like that does not do this. Yeah, it looks like that does not happen here, which is okay, that's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Uh, but let's open up notes and let's go ahead and make a new note here and just start drawing, okay? So this works just fine. Everything seems to be doing just fine. Okay. And uh, yeah, not much is going on here. Uh, really, it's just uh, the experience I think you would expect. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, it's a selection tool. I don't use this notes app a lot. Let's go ahead and bring up our pencil tool. It looks like the tilt does work. I'm gonna switch to something a little more uh, obvious here, a little red color. It looks like our, our tilt does work, which is nice. Uh, maybe a white would be the best. Yeah, the tilt works, which is very good. Okay, that seems to be, oh, did we get a disconnect? I think I may, this may have powered off. Double tap to turn, I may have accidentally hit that, let's see. But it looks like this works just fine. And the tilt is working great, okay? I'm noticing no pressure sensitivity, which to be fair, it did not claim on the box, but uh, you do have tilt recognition, which is nice. So we will move on to some other apps and check those out. So now that we've checked out notes, you can use you can use this pencil alternative, definitely to take notes in apps such as, you know, the regular notes app or GoodNotes, anything like that, as long as you're not relying on pressure sensitivity, but we will go ahead and check out, you know, ArtStudio Pro and Clip Studio just to uh, run the full spectrum of uh, art apps, okay? So let's open up ArtStudio Pro. We've got a blank document here, and let's just open up uh, whatever, whatever brush, something with uh, tilt recognition would probably be the best. So we have my sketch pencil brush right here. Uh, and let's go ahead and see. So you got full pressure, uh, full pressure, but you do get the tilt. So there are some things you could do about that. Um, if you are looking to just do doodles, I wouldn't recommend a pencil like this when it comes to um, doing full blown art because it may just be frustrating to use after a while with no pressure sensitivity. But if you're just trying to do like a doodle here and there, you can do things like there's a flow bar on the side here. You can turn the flow down really far and that'll get you a lighter line like this. And it builds up as you go on top of the previous line. So it's all, it's uh, you can do things like this to mitigate any like adverse effects you get from Using an, uh, a device like this that doesn't have pressure sensitivity, it may be frustrating to use after a while if you're doing art you know, all the time on the iPad, but for little situations like this, I think that's just fine. Let's go ahead and bring our tool back to default. And yeah, when you bring it back to default or my settings that I use with the Apple Pencil, you get that full gamut of pressure and it just, it's just on or off. But you do get the tilt, which is uh, very nice. Same with the Zag Pro Stylus we had in a previous video. I'll link it somewhere around here. We did have uh, the Zag Pro Stylus and that was a, a very similar experience. One of the things I'm noticing is I think I keep accidentally shutting this off. It is actually a lot easier than you'd think to tap this little top part, but that's user error on my part and it's really easy to turn it back on. Just boop, boop, turn it back on and then you're good to go. So now we are in Clip Studio, and I think the experience is gonna be very similar to how it was in Art Studio. It's just going to be no pressure sensitivity, and you can adjust your settings through flow and opacity, and that will be how you get any results that you'd want to via the, um, the general look of your brush or how you'd want your pencil to perform. So we got my, my custom pencil brush in here, and same thing, you get tilt recognition, but no pressure sensitivity, which is which is okay in certain situations. And you can go ahead and do things like, you know, turn down the um, 
brush density, I believe. Yeah, if you turn down like the brush density in Clip Studio, you get something a little more on the lines of an, uh, uh, an opaque brush and you can start to get a little more um, sketchy with your stuff and just build tone on top of itself and make it uh, darker and darker as you go, depending on how you uh, adjust those settings. So it's gonna be the same across the board when it comes to art apps, whether you, you're using a free app, a paid app, this device cannot do pressure sensitivity, but um, I do believe it's pretty good for the price. If you don't care too much about pressure sensitivity, you can always use this to take notes or like I said, do uh, doodles on the side. As long as you're not relying heavily on pressure sensitivity, this is probably gonna be a pretty good product, uh, especially given the price, it's, it's less than $30 and that's a, a pretty good value for what you're getting, especially since you get the extra tip and uh, all, this, all this stuff. It seems to be a pretty reliable uh, piece of tech and yeah, I, I would not mind using this if pressure sensitivity wasn't a huge priority for me. Now, if you're a full-time artist, I could not recommend this device, or even if you're someone who is a, an enthusiast artist, uh, because you're just gonna probably be let down because there's no pressure sensitivity. Uh, but that being said, if you're someone who's concerned more about something like taking notes, and uh, you know something uh, a little more in that regard, I would, I would recommend this. I would say this would be a good device to use. Um, there is nothing uh, inherently wrong with it. Quality seems nice for what you're getting. Once again, less than $30. You get a little charging port on the side, on off right here. You double tap, turns it on, turns it off. And one of the important things is you do get an extra tip. You get an extra tip. Unlike some other styluses, you do not get an extra tip and it is very hard to find extra tips. So this is a big plus. So at the very least, you get one extra tip, which, you know, if you're using something like a paper-like screen protector, you are gonna need extra tips uh, inevitably. So this is very big and very important. So that is a great thing that um, XSWID has put that extra tip in there as well. So I believe this is a good device and it performs pretty well, once again, just as long as you don't need pressure sensitivity. If you don't, that's a go from me. In conclusion, the XWID pen really seems like a good Apple Pencil alternative for somebody who's interested in doing things like note taking and possibly using uh, an Apple Pencil instead of a mouse or trackpad on your iPad. So if you're in the market to do something like that and you're not really reliant on pressure sensitivity, it comes in under $30 on Amazon, which is a pretty good value given that there are many Apple Pencil alternatives that are on the pricier side. This one is a pretty good price. And I will leave a link to the XSWID pen in the description below. And yeah, all in all, as long as you're not using this pencil for, you know, hardcore art, you know, art all the time where you really need pressure sensitivity and all the bells and whistles of the Apple Pencil, such as the double tap on the side and things like that. This is a pretty good value. It is a step above something like a dummy stylus where it's just imitating a finger and it has a few extra features such as the tilt recognition and uh, palm rejection. So, it, you know, it has some good features for its value. That being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. What do you think about this stylus? Is it something that you're interested in? Are you interested in Apple Pencil alternatives? or are you more so like, uh, do you just want the Apple Pencil and are you not interested in any alternatives? I would love to know in the comments or if you have any questions about this device or any other iPad accessories or devices that you may wanna see me review in the future. I would love to hear your feedback. But that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And I would also like to thank my patrons who are listed right here who have been supporting me to make these videos and upload exclusive content over there on the Patreon. Without you guys, I couldn't do it. So thank you so much. And if you didn't get enough of my face watching this video, you can always catch me Monday through Friday live on twitch.tv slash Kage Bonito. I start at 11 a.m. Pacific time and I would love to see you there. And I've also left links to things such as my merch in the description below where you can buy some nice shirts or stickers, anything like that. Every little bit supports this channel and goes directly back into making videos and more content for you guys. So I would really appreciate it. But once again, thank you so much. I will see you in the next video. Peace. You've got to watch Kage when he goes live on stream. He does the arts and he makes funny faces. He's going to draw you someday. But you gotta pay.
twitch.tv Kage Bonito twitch.tv Kage Bonito Oh, Jesus. Well, here we 